I'm just gonna say it. RWA have been teasing us for the longest time with their spring bolt action, Lee Enfield. It felt as if we were chasing that unicorn some old fortune teller told us about only because we're a gullible, nay, hopeful group of airsofters that believe anything can happen since the GBB P90 showed up. But here it is, in all its glory. The real wood furniture looks pristine. Most of the metallic parts are made out of steel, but the outer barrel and the receiver is made of a CNC aluminium. Not aluminum, aluminium. Altogether, it does look stunning. Fresh, like a rookie out of boot camp. It's ready for its first taste of battle. The history of the real steel short mag Lee Enfield goes back to the beginning of the 20th century. Without going into too much detail, it was first used during the Second Boer War and has pretty much been a part of every war since. If we're trying to be a little bit more specific, the RWA Lee Enfield is based on the number four model, which was heavily used by the Brits during the Second World War. It's safe to say that you would have seen it in most World War II orientated movies since the 1950s, therefore having a rather prominent part to play in all war associated games. It's a rather strange sensation holding such a beautiful creature for the very first time. Though I don't want to judge a book by its cover because us airsofters, we've had our hearts broken way too many times before. And we'd like to think that we've learnt our lesson the first time round and so we stay rather skeptical, asking ourselves, is this really a unicorn or just an ass wearing a party cap in a very good disguise? This version has had some slight modifications in comparison to the original variant. For example, the barrel actually protrudes from the end instead of a regular nose cap. And this version can actually fit a spike bayonet. Well, I say this version, though there is no way to tell whether the RWA can fit a real steel spike bayonet because owning a real spike bayonet could potentially be illegal where I currently am. The front sight has been redesigned and towards the back, you'll notice a ladder aperture sight, one sight for while it's lowered and another when you raise it. But you could also raise this aperture sight by turning the dial at the top. You can most definitely attach a sling to the RWA Lee Enfield as there are two sling points on the underside of it. You could also release the magazine and the magazine release button is right in front of the trigger, releasing a 30 round metallic magazine. I did mention that this is a spring bolt action battle rifle, but what I didn't mention is that the cylinder is a tiny bit smaller than the Tokimori VSR-10, so the pull is relatively stiff. But what is very strange is that the push is stiff too. What it sounds like is like somebody who tries to crack their knuckles every single time they pull the trigger. So this is gonna have a very bad case of arthritis when it's older. Internally, it has a lengthy 500 millimeter inner barrel with an inner diameter of 6.05 millimeters. Right behind it is a 60 degree AEG hop, so we'll see how well it performs later. The safety lever could be found on the left side, and there is a certain sense of sturdiness there. The hop up adjustment dial is underneath this wooden panel, though I'm not going to show you how to get to it and how to adjust it once you do, only because I do not want to risk damaging this pristine new model. Though Gambit does have a sample and he's going to show you how to do it in a separate video, which you can find by clicking on the card or on the link in the description below. That's about it folks, I think it's time to chrono the thing. For the chrono test we're using 0.2 gram 6mm BBs. Unfortunately, Hong Kong has decided to rain on our parade, though it's just a little light at the moment. But that shouldn't stop us from doing an accuracy test. So what we're going to do is hit those two cans of gas on that tree 40 meters away from us. Though this is no regular accuracy test. What I'm going to do is pit the Lee Enfield up against a more modern day sniper rifle, something that's gained traction over the past year. And this is what the... I got what? myself a striker, guys. I mean, you know, tried and true, 
great rifle. I think it's gonna perform well today. What do you guys think? Look, okay, I, I like the striker, but so why I. did you have to choose the yellow one? We had a black, OD, white, pink. We had a pink one. Now Tim, remember, we're an inclusive channel. We have to target all of our audiences. Portugal, this one's for you guys. Whoa, 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 what is that? What is what? What did you do here? Oh, I mean, I have to aim and you don't have a scope, so I put some sights on it. My eyes are on fire. Okay, let's do it. He's gonna start, I'm done. Let's do it, guys. So I'm about to take 10 shots out of the striker and we all know they kind of chrono around the same. For this distance, I'm gonna pull out some two eights. So that's what I'm gonna be using. It is raining a little bit, so I hope it doesn't affect things too much. Oh, I am shooting the one on the left. Brand new gun needs a bit of lube. Nice shot! Uh, stiff bolt! Uh, new gun! These sights are so hard to see through. It's close, but no dice. New gun! Bolt's a little stiff. Six out of 10. I think that was pretty good given these adverse conditions. Not bad for the old striker. Now let's see how Tim does with that Lee Enfield. So my goal right now is to try and hit that right target more than six times. Seven out of 10 or above. Let's see if that is achievable for the Lee Enfield in a standing position. Ah, oh, just swung over to the right. Yes! Very stiff bolt. There we go. Whew! That bolt is annoying. Not as difficult as Mark's one though. Raining and it's windy. Oh, to the right. The weather's not helping. And that weather just decided to blow the BB over to the left. And that means I hit the target six out of 10 times, just like the striker. We'll have to see how to conclude this now. You know what? I'm not even mad that it's raining. I think it's rather poetic in a way. RWA has replicated a British battle rifle. It's only appropriate that it rains like it does in Britain all the time. So the last thing I want to do is to have this out in this terrible weather. The quality of the metal and the wood is so pristine. I just don't want to harm it in any way, shape or form, especially have water dripped on it. That's why I'm glad I'm in the shade. One thing that does bother me a little, that bolt action is very heavy and relatively stiff. If you are a little less stockier than I am, you may have trouble with that, but hitting a cam from 40 meters out using only the rear and front sight, that is pretty decent in my books. I know six out of 10 times is the same amount of times that the striker hit the target. And don't get me wrong, the striker is a great sniper rifle. If you haven't already seen the review, I suggest you do so by clicking on the card above or in the description below. Honestly, I don't know where Mark is. I think he just went off gallivanting, hopefully to burn that yellow sniper rifle. He could have chosen any other color. That yellow is just hideous. 
I just wanted to show that this battle rifle can be pitted up against any modern day sniper rifle right out of a box, and it can. But, after what you've just seen, is it the Empire's finest? Let me know in the comments section below. So for this cool product and many more, go to our online store at www.redwolfairsoft.com and I'll be seeing you on another episode of Red Wolf TV. Pornstash, just gonna sit here and reminisce.